I am the vine, you are the branch, do not forsake me. Getting off the highway to hell, <laughs> which I was on many years ago, and getting onto the highway to heaven, the stairway to heaven, the narrow stairway to heaven, through Jesus Christ. And what is that talking about? I'm talking about repentance. Repentance is turning away from sin and turning unto God. And that is what it's all about. We all, so let me ask you this. How many of you consider yourself to be a good person? Most people would say, I am a good person. I am good. I've done many good things. I've helped people. I've loved people. I've never sinned, I've never committed any bad crimes, I'm not in jail, I haven't killed anybody, I haven't raped anybody, I haven't, I haven't been, a, 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 I haven't murdered anybody. But it's not about that. Have you, now let me ask you another question. Have you obeyed the Ten Commandments? The Ten Commandments is, do not, takes the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Number one is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, and strength. Number two is to not worship idols. Number three is to not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Number four is to honor the Sabbath and keep it holy. Number five is to honor your father and your mother. Number six, do not kill. Number seven is do not commit adultery. Now, Jesus said that if you just look at a woman with lust, you have already committed adultery with her in your heart. Now, this is a high, high standard that many of us cannot, none of us actually can, can keep up. Because our standards are down here and God's up here. But we'll get back to that later. Number eight, do, do not steal. Number nine is to do not, do not, do not lie, do not bear false witness, excuse me. And number 10 is to not covet or to be jealous is one of them. So in all these things, the first four commandments is to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind and strength. Those are the first four. The next six is to love your neighbor as much as you do yourself. Now how many of us can actually obey these Ten Commandments and say, I'm guiltless, I'm holy, I'm, I'm, no, I'm no sin against mine, against me. None of us. Because the only one who has ever led a sinless life is the Lord Jesus Christ. We're all sinful, we're all sinners. We are sinners by, that's our, our nature. We are, we are sinners by nature. Since the fall of Adam, we have inherited this sinful nature. That's our nature. When a, when a woman walks by or an opposite sex walks by, we'll look at her with lust in our hearts. That's our nature. When, when we, when we, when we're angry at somebody, we'll get mad at them. We'll get mad at them so much so that we want to kill them. We don't want to admit it, but we have it in our hearts. And God sees our hearts. So what do we do? So what do I do? We're in a conundrum here. What do I do? At the end of my days, I'm guilty before a sinful. I, I'm. I'm I'm guilty, I'm a sinful man before a holy God. What do I do? Do I, do I think I'm going to be condemned? Or do, am I going to go to heaven? Well, I'm condemned. We're all condemned. For all have, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Romans 6, 23 says, the wages, it means the price. The price we have to pay is death. 
And the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus, God is rich in mercy. He sent His only begotten Son. He came down in the form of a man to die on the cross, to shed His precious, holy, sinless blood for us, to wash us clean by faith. For it's by, gra by, by grace we have been saved, through faith. And this not for ourselves, but this is a gift of God. Not by work, so that no one can vote. Ephesians 2 and 9. Anyway, God bless you. you as well. Atheist, I'm sorry. But God is rich in mercy. He's given us a way out to faith in Jesus Christ. Once we, we do have faith, but we need also to repent. Because you show your faith by repentance. Repent. Walking towards sin and turning around and walking towards God. Make, make a 180. Doing a 180 and, and turning around and from your sin unto God. And then by repentance unto God and faith unto our Lord Jesus Christ, we are saved according to Acts chapter 20, verse 21. Now, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, which is Romans 3.23. For the weight of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. But God sent His Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. But the way, but God who is, who is rich in mercy has given us eternal life through Jesus Christ. Our Lord. And if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you are saved. I put to Romans 10, 9 and 10. Jesus said of himself that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. I put to John 14, 6. We have in this society today, in this current world system today, we have all these diseases, all these troubles, all, all these violent troubles with the police, with, with, the, with the, the, the thugs, all kinds of problems with the, the, the temperature, the earthquakes. Look at the temperature right now. We're in Montreal, Canada, in the north North America, it's supposed to be freezing cold, but we're in a heat wave. It's hotter than California is all year long. What's going on? This world is upside down, is it not? Well, that's when Jesus is about to come back. Because he said, look up for the redemption draws nine. He's, he's about to come back. And Jesus says in Matthew 24, that before he's going to return, there's going to be pestilences, rumors of wars, troubles in all, all sides. But look up. Look up because Jesus is soon to return. That's our hope. He's the hope of glory. So that's what I'm, I'm inviting you to, to repent, to take it, take this seriously, take this message seriously tonight, to repent of your current sins. You see, we don't have, we don't know how long we have to live. We don't know I don't know how long I have to live. I might die on the way home tonight. I might die on the way up the street tonight. I might die from a heart attack right now. Lord forbid, but I have the peace of mind that my soul is going to heaven to be with my Lord Jesus Christ. Because I love him and I repented. I repented, I am repenting of my sins and I trust in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Alone, only Jesus has saved me. Nothing I've done, there's nothing I've done, not even this, not even yelling, not even crying out on a Thursday night in this, in this beautiful weather. Not even this can save my soul. Only the grace of God, the grace of Almighty God, Lord God Almighty, because He loves me. 
he loves me and he's given me the option to repent. That means to turn around from my sin and trust in Jesus Christ. You see, 1 John 1 9 says that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1 9. We need it's a daily, daily repentance. It's not a one-time event. I didn't repent once 15 years ago and turned to Jesus 15 years ago and I'm saved forever. Yes, I'm saved forever. But it's, it's, as long as I'm alive, I got to repent every day. I can't fall away. I got to keep my faith. I got to keep reading, keep praying, keep trusting in Jesus Christ, keep loving in Jesus Christ. Keep hoping in Jesus Christ. Keep repenting. Keep obeying. I gotta trust and obey. Obedience, that's how I show my love. How do you show your love to your parents? By obeying. How do you show your love to your mother who asks you to do your bed? By obeying her and making your bed. How do you show your your love to your mother who tells you to be polite at the table, you, you obey her and you are polite at the table. You say, thank you, mom. I love you, mom. And you pick up your dirty dishes and you bring them to the sink and you clean them. It is that simple. That's all that we need to do. If we want to show our love to our Heavenly Father, we need to obey Him. Obey Him. And how do you obey Him? By obeying the Ten Commandments. Do their best to obey the Ten Commandments. Obeying them, and every time you fall, every time you disobey, every time you, you repent, right away. You see, we all have a conscience. A conscience that God given, a God given, a God given alert signal in our hearts is our conscience. So whenever we sin, whenever we do something wrong that's against, his commandments, then our conscience goes off. Our goal, we feel bad. If I do something wrong, I'll feel bad. If I, if I, if I go and I, and I see a, a, a dead cat, a cat dying on the floor, I'll kick it until it dies. I feel bad. Why do I feel bad? That's because I have a conscience. If I see somebody in pain and I ignore him and I walk by and I, I, and I, and I see him dying to death and I walk by like he's, like he's just a piece of trash, I feel bad. I have a conscience. Why? Because I have love, the love of God. God has given me love in my heart. God has given me love in my heart. That's the proof that we have a conscience. I love you, brother. I love your dog. I love everybody that I'm preaching to. I love this city. That's why I'm crying out to you to repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm gonna go again. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna start to talk. First things first, we all, I was to ask you, do you consider yourself to be a good person? Most people would say yes. I consider myself to be a good person. Then if I say, do you think that you have obeyed the Ten Commandments? Do you think you have obeyed the Ten Commandments? Do you think that you have obeyed the Ten Commandments? Well, most people would say yes. Do you think you have obeyed the Ten Commandments? Okay, another one. Excuse me, do you think that you're a good person? Do you think you have obeyed the Ten Commandments? Most people would say yes. Then I'm going to tell them, have you ever told a lie? Have you ever stolen? However small, when you're a kid, you might have taken a candy. Maybe, maybe they'll say no, maybe they'll walk away from you. Like, <laughs> maybe, maybe they're going to admit it. And they're going to say, yes, I took a little candy. Yes, I downloaded something off the internet. I downloaded I did something. Do you consider yourself innocent or guilty? And they say, yeah, I consider myself innocent. Why? 
Because God is merciful. So I wouldn't get that me. God is merciful. He's going to give me eternal life in heaven. God's a good God. Yes, God is a good God, but he's a wrathful God. God hates sin. God hates sin. Let me ask you something. Does your father... Does your father love it when you steal money from his from his wallet? Does your father love it? Love you when you when you do something bad to to his uh, what to his household? Does your father love it when you are you are impolite to his guests? Does your father love you? No, of course not. Your father is gonna spank you. Why? Because he loves you. Him for a loving God. Our God chastises us because He loves us. And that's why the cha all the chastisement that He's put on us, that He wants to put on us because of all of our sins, has been taken by His Son, Jesus Christ. God came down in the form of a man, Jesus Christ. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. In, Psalm, in the book of Psalm, Psalm 51, I believe it says. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Our, our punishment was taken by Jesus Christ. And if we repent, if we repent, and we say, Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. Help me to live for you. I want to be obedient to your message, to your gospel, to your commandments, Lord Jesus. I want to live for you. Give me a new heart. God has taken out Jeremiah 79 for the wager. Jeremiah 79 says, God has removed from us a heart of stone. He's given us a heart of flesh. We need to obey the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to repent and believe our Lord Jesus Christ. If you repent and believe our Lord Jesus Christ, do you consider yourself to be a good person, my friend? Have you obeyed the Ten Commandments? Excuse me, sir. Do you, do you consider yourself to be a good person? God bless you. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Jesus Christ, our Lord, Romans 20. Do you consider yourself to be a good person, miss? Sir, do you consider yourself to be a good person? I'd like to give this to you. God bless you. I'd like to give you a million dollars over the million dollar message on you. God bless you. I'd like to give you a million dollar bill gift with this million dollar message on the back. Anyway, do we all consider ourselves to be good people, but none of us are. None of us are. We are all guilty. We are all guilty before a holy God. Because God is so perfect. He demands perfection. It's something that our, we cannot reach. Because our standards are down here. God's standards are up here. The only way for us to complete that, to fulfill those standards, is by, by the dying of Jesus Christ, His Son. He died on the cross for us. Excuse me, sir, do you consider yourself to be His person? God bless you, brothers. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Jesus Christ loves you, my friend. We all, like 
sheep have gone astray. Each of us has gone to his own way. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the but the wage but the iniquity of uh, of all of us is on of us all is on his shoulders. Greater is he who is in us. Believers than he was in the world. As John Foster. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. Close. Okay. Let me ask you this. Do you consider yourself to be a good person in this? 